I've been thinking about different things in the last couple months, and I listened to a podcast uh, that mentioned a thinker that I've thought about over the last few years. Um, and actually, he was very influential way back when, when I was like 14, 15 years old in high school, uh, as a rabbi by the name of Rabbi Michael Wishagrod. And he was very unique because he was a Jewish theologian. In religion, theology, particularly in Christianity and Islam, I assume are very large. I know in Christianity is, I think in Islam as well. In Judaism, philosophy is more studied and there are a lot more Jewish philosophers than there are theologians. Michael Wishagrod was different. He was a German-born rabbi. He also differed from his contemporary Orthodox rabbis because he was German in background rather than Eastern European. So he, he knew the Talmud, he knew the oral tradition, but he placed the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, kind of as the primary text, which is unusual among Ashkenazic Eastern European Jews. Um, they tend to go to the oral tradition over Tanakh and think of Tanakh as more basic, whereas I think he viewed it as, yes, basic, but basic as in primary and not as in something to be set aside and then the oral tradition is kind of held in, in esteem. And he studied uh, Christian theology in order to understand Jewish theology. Ideas about election and um, God's love of Jesus and therefore the Christian church. The language that's used in the New Testament, it's also in the Tanakh, but it's used there for Israel. And so he would write about universalism versus particularism. And this is something I've really both struggled with, but it, it's helped me to understand my view of the world. The Hebrew Bible is a is a book that has the dichotomy between universalism and particularism. Universalism is the idea of God being the God of all people, loving all people, and particularism is the favoritism of God for a unique group. Some religions are universalistic, like Christianity and Islam. They ideally would want everyone to be a Christian or everyone to be a Muslim, whereas in Judaism, we don't have that view. We view Jewish people as special, unique, set apart through God's love of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. But we believe that God loves everyone, but we believe that God has a special relationship with the Jewish people that is unique to the Jewish people. That is not... Yes, from Sinai there are obligations, but there's also language that is not obligatory, which shows that God loves the people of Israel because he loves the people of Israel basically because he loved Abraham. There's rabbis try to come up with reasons for why he loved Abraham, but it's actually not said in the text. It's just said that he does. And Michael Wishagod talked about this idea, because I've always struggled with this, living the life that I live, coming from this mixed background of Christianity and Judaism. I understand what it means for Jews, but if I believe in it, what does it mean for non-Jews? What are the universalistic implications? And Michael Wishagod said that by God loving the people of Israel, he revealed to humanity the wonders of preferential love. That actually preferential particularist love is wonderful versus universalistic love. It's always bothered me as a teacher when I've been with teachers who are parents who say to another parent, like during a conference or something, I love all the kids I teach like I love my own children. I always want to say, no, you don't, hopefully, because you should love your own children more. A woman should love her husband more than other men. A man should love his wife more than other women. He should love, the preferential love is actually a wonderful revelation to the world. Loyalist love, loving a particular group of people or particular individuals more than others is actually a revelation from God about how we should live our lives, that we do have obligations to certain people more than others. And I think that's a wonderfully powerful thing, this idea of covenant, of special relationship, that we all have special relationships, whether it be family, whether it be relationships that we create through making new families through marriage or forming family units, um, through religious congregations, through nations um, and communities, that that is important. 
and that that stands as a revelation to the world that God loves the people of Israel so much that we should also be able to experience and express preferential love ourselves. It's not based in racial prejudice. It's not based in ethnocentrism. It's based in the idea that we all have people or places, individuals in our lives that we love more. That we that we we experience more. It doesn't mean that the human dignity of those people is more than another person's. It's not. And that's what is said through the prophetic text of the Hebrew Bible. When God tells the people of Israel, Do you think I don't care about the Assyrians or the Ethiopians? You know, I care about I care about the Egyptians. I care about all of humanity. All of humanity is created by Selim Elohim in the image of God. And that helps us understand one of my heroes is Menachem Begin. And uh, Daniel Gordas wrote a biography about him which looks at how Begin is influenced primarily by the Tanakh. And I was related to that because I too was influenced by the Tanakh. And I always saw it with people like Ben-Gurion or others who were also Bible readers. But, but Begin really was influenced by the Jewish Bible. Christians called the Old Testament, others called the, the Hebrew Bible by Tanakh. He, he knew Tanakh and he was influenced by that. So he knew that as it says in Tanakh, that Amalek, as we read a few weeks ago, Amalek will always come against us. There's always going to be these en enemies of the Jewish people who wish to strike us down and we have to fight against them. But he also knew when there were Vietnamese boat people that no nations of the world would take in, that we had an obligation because we were strangers in the land of Egypt, so we had to help them. And I love that idea of being able to see your enemy and fight against them and then see the stranger and, and know that it is your obligation to, to feed and take them in. That it's not universalism, but it's particularism versus universalism. Being able to understand your obligations to your own and being able to see another people who need to be brought in and taken care of, but not mistaken your enemy also for that people. It, it, it's, a, it's a lovely thing. It's a wonderful thing. And it's something that I think is helpful for living out our faith, our tradition, our covenant, wherever we're at. I, I live in rural Louisiana. My entire life has been surrounded by non-Jewish people. Even my own background is a mixture of Christianity and Judaism. I had to make a choice for Judaism. And even then, my, my entire romantic relationships have always been with non-Jewish people. There, there's not a Jewish population from which to really create a family. And I think sometimes, okay, well, what am I doing here as an individual? What am I doing here as a person who, who is not going to be able to, to create an ideal Jewish community or even be a part of one? And I think, well, what, what is it that we offer the non-Jewish world? Like, I see it in Christianity. That's part of Jewish understanding as well, is that Christianity tells the world, hey, there's one God, the God of Israel. We say the same thing with Islam. But I think specifically with Christianity, looking and saying, hey, there's one God, it's the God of Israel, and even kind of messianic claims point to the idea of the need for redemption. Well, what does that mean for a person like myself who has been influenced by Hebrew Bible living here? I'm able to look at people and say, okay, God loves Israel because he has a special relationship with them. We also can show preferential love. We also can show particularistic love. And by showing that, we also reveal the character nature of God. A person can look at a father or a mother who is living out preferential love and see the nature of God in that. A person can look at the preferential nation, uh, uh, preferential love that God has for the people of Israel and he, can, and he or she can see that the people of Israel are important. Therefore, it, it impacts the way that we look at nations and look, it impacts the way that we look at sovereignty. And not on a nationalistic scale only, but also on a communal scale, on a scale of, of statehood, on a scale of households. Why can I not go into my neighbor's house just because I want to? What if I'm bigger than my neighbor? What if I have more guns than my neighbor? What if I have more power than my neighbor? Why should I respect my neighbor's sovereignty? From a theological standpoint, it's preferential love. Understanding that I have obligations to my house, they have obligations to their house, and that we what theirs is not mine, and vice versa. At the same time, how, why am I obligated to help my neighbor? Because we were strangers in the land of Egypt. And if you believe that the God of Israel is the God of all people, then you should be able to also relate to that as well. And maybe you are able to participate in that story. It's something I've been thinking about. I think that 
it, it helps understand, it helps me understand my place in the world. But I've always thought, well, what, what does that offer to the non-Jew? Should I just tell them to go to church? And oftentimes that's the answer because most have kind of a Christian orientation. But what if they don't? Should they convert to Judaism? Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe they can be inspired by the, the relationship that God has for Israel to understand also their own obligations, their own preferential loves. Something I'm thinking about, and I myself have preferential love for non-Jewish people that I love above just about everyone else. The Jews that I love the most are my parents, and I love the nation of Israel. The only thing I, I, I feel even more is the love for someone who means the world to me right now who happens to not be Jewish. I don't think of them as a non-Jew. I think of them as, insert the name of that person there and their family and their children, and preferential love. But I believe that God is redeeming the people of Israel because he has a preferential love for them, and that is a sign of God's continuing presence in this world. And therefore, we also can remember that the God who loves his people made the world and tells us how to handle our issues with sovereignty and tells us that um, we are to respect our neighbors and tells us that he cares for widows and orphans and tells us that injustices are things that he notices and don't think that he doesn't notice them and that we have rights and obligations and we also have a way that we are to act in this world. The God of Israel lives. And there's a universalistic implication for that as well. Something to think about.